So that's your girls ready? No, they haven't left yet, so I don't know who that is. Oh. You are taking this man ass trash Halloween costume way too far, bro. Damn, you even smell like trash. Well, you look like Caesar from Planet of the Apes. It's good to see you, bro. What happened to you, bro? Let's just call it the world's worst reason. You and Nikki still together? Is Mugabe still ruling them gracefully? Well, there you have it, bro. There you have it. The beast is back, man. Hey. The beast is back. <laughs> Nah, but the, the beast is bad! Yeah, we need to come into you quickly as well for Pride and Petty. There we go. So everyone will know Yelezo is the man who's actually helped make this thing come together. He's the brainchild. Or is, this brainchild has also come partly from him and Kibbs. So to you, you very, very, you're a very knowledgeable person when it comes to the entertainment space. Hence why the entertainment talk, right? And you are now head of content creation. Curation, sorry for a reef, which happened now in the vlog. Digital hub in the reef. The digital hub in the reef. Just... Okay, the digital hub of a reef. My apologies, right? But you are still now involved in, you know, looking at all these different web series that are taking place. People were submitting to you. You were having conversations with the guys there themselves. You know, in terms of what works, what doesn't work. You know, Olungela just said now your shit's got a, you know, it's got a bang, it's got a slap. So for you now, I want to come into you before we talk about pride and petty, right? What would you say is the main thing that you learned while you were busy with Arif, especially with the digital space and the web series space? Um, I think the most interesting thing I found about the digital space is that it's, it's, it's extremely interesting. Like in terms of, like if you, if you watch a lot of broadcast shows, you know every channel. So you know what SCBC One will give you, you know what Nzanti Magic will give you. You know all those types of shows. And a lot of them truthfully don't, I don't want to say they don't relate, but there's a specific market in terms of youth that, that, that they don't capture. But then when you go into web series, everyone's got their own type of voice that they're trying to push out and you get all of these different perspectives that's really young, it's really fresh. And it's stuff which you really wouldn't see on television. So that there's, there's a whole lot more variety that you can choose from to now start, to start curating and saying, okay, this is, this is actually what we're capable of because um, you can watch Mzanti Magic, but Mzanti Magic doesn't have comedy series. And the people who do comedy series and they're building that space, people wouldn't believe that we have comedy voices, but we do. We have people who are doing all of these different types of stories and they're, they're literally gaining their voices now. So it's, it's the world, didn't, I don't say they're gaining, but they're exploring their voices and they're starting to see it. So for me, it was kind of just seeing how broad and how broad the African story and the African voice currently is already. And well, I've just started with web series, not even at the cusp of it. All right, so then let's come into Pride and Petty. What is Pride and Petty? Uh, for anyone who's never seen it, what is Pride and Petty? What are you trying to, what's the story you're trying to tell? You know, let's just, just get into that quick fast. Well, okay, so basically I was part of a, an Mnet Academy called the Magic Emotion Academy. And in that academy, we did like everything. I got to write for shows like Isibaya, I got to do Mzanti Magic movies, write them, direct them, kind of get like the whole like production experience. And then when I left, I had, I had this confidence saying, okay, now I know everything, let me go start. And <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was a lot, it was a lot of, um, I don't say, it was a lot of rejection. So you write these movies, you pitch them, and actually, we didn't get rejected in terms of the content, but people would just say the same thing with Nona, like everyone's like, your ideas are great, it's awesome, letter of intent, or you start getting to the next step, and then all of a sudden, it's not going anywhere. And we did this for about a year, in terms of pitching or going nowhere, and I just like, okay, I give up, let's just start creating something. Because also, the people I was in the academy with, I'm, I'm very good, I'm, I'm slightly competitive, but you're seeing everyone else is kind of just continuing to do things and it feels like you're just stagnant. So we started like a comedy, um, sketch comedy show called Broke Ass Independent. I just called like some of my best friends and he started um, doing like one minute, two minute sketches and then one of them hit in 
terms of every time we showed it to a specific person, they were like, this, this sketch, this dynamic works. So then we decided to build a show around the dynamic from that. It was basically, so this guy brings a go home to kind of, you know, have relations with. And as he's getting in, his girlfriend comes out of the door and is about to catch him red-handed and then he acts like the girl is a taxi, is an Uber driver. <laughs> and then he sends her away. And every time we did that, people just kind of were like, there's a certain kind of pettiness and funniness in that kind of comedy, so we just put a show around it. And yeah, that's how it started. Okay, so for you now, I just want to tap into your, your, your mind a bit more, right? You know quite a bit, you do a lot of research. You do a lot of research. So there's different formats, I guess, that people could follow within web series, right? You can go in the different ways. The first question I have for you is, would you say there's a career? Same thing I was asking, you know, Tatelana, is there a career in web series? I think people need to think of web series as kind of like a business, an investment. Because if you like if you look at a lot of general businesses, you have to consistently invest in it. Start you or, or like I think for a lot of businesses the first two years is you putting in money and not getting any money back. So web series is basically you starting to build what, what is your signature, as in terms of um, what, what is it that... Because you can, you can tell a Chuck Law production in terms of comedy from anything, from two and a half men, all that type of stuff. You can tell... Now, right now, you can tell a part of Macarella production by the way he, he does all that, all that type of stuff, but the broadcaster doesn't give you as much creativity to build your voice and to build what it is your brand is. So web series, I, I do believe it as a career in terms of you getting the space to actually start crafting what your voice is so that once you've actually built your audience, you can then monetize off of that crowd. So then my next question to you then, thank you for that, right? My next question then to you is, when you start, because the one thing I think everyone would have gotten right from the speakers is that, start, right? The most important thing is just start, like no matter what, right? So to you is, when you start, does it have to be perfect? Do you have to find the perfect actor, actress? Do you have to find the perfect director? Do you have to find the perfect, you know, that is perfection matters? Because now you're talking about crafting your voice. You know, does perfection matter when you start in this road? Perfection is an illusion. Like, even, even if you have the biggest budget in the world, something will go wrong. And the, the great thing about, like, doing, the, the great thing about starting, and starting small, is that you, you get to understand what your strengths and your weaknesses are because a lot of the time you're doing everything. You have to be like you, sometimes you're the camera person, sometimes you're the sound person, sometimes you're editing. Sometimes I hate camera. I've, I've been in front of the camera for one of the sketches because at the last minute, the person who was meant to act didn't put, pull through, so then I had to be in the sketch. You start getting, you, you get pulled in so many directions that you start seeing where your strengths are and where your weaknesses are. So waiting for perfection is actually damaging you because you then don't get to fully understand the scope of where your strengths are. Because I know, even Pride and Petty, our son, I, I know for a fact our son is crap. It's the, it's, it's the one thing which I know. No one has to tell me. It's something which you're working on. But our son is crap, and, it's, it's, and now I know that's my weakness. But in terms of writing, that's where I feel the most comfortable. And so it's waiting for perfection yeah, it's, it's, it's an illusion and it stops you from actually growing. Okay, then also, and just for the sake of wrapping up as well, I've got one more question to you, right? Um, we know that there's an appetite from the international market, right? People are interested in our content, people are interested in our culture, as I say, right? Now, let's bring it back locally. Let's say there's no investors from international market. Do you think that there's a market share in South Africa? Or are we consuming our own content? Are we waiting to get recognition from overseas before we start consuming our own content? Or is there that natural appetite for us to be like, ah, man, I want to go watch Itesha, I want to go watch Love, you know, like, and it's shot by Ziggy, or, you know, is there that kind of, of, of app, like, I want to use again the word appetite, you know, from our own market to push ourselves out there? Definitely, I think it's building because if you, if you look at um, the couple of shows, so Suzal DIY, for example, is a comedy, um, it's a comedy show that's on YouTube and the lead actor that that show kind of gained an audience and 
the people who did that web series leveraged the popularity of that web series to do a, um, a series called Tali's Wedding Diaries, which is on Showmax. And Showmax, um, that show won five SAFTAs this year, including Best Comedy, Best Writing, Best um, Actress. But the genesis of that was from a web series. If you look at um, Comedy Central, there's tons of there's tons of filler shows that are starting to come up that are five minute peaks. Those are actually from the web. There's one with um, a comedian called he's a Jewish comedian. I forgot his name, Glenn Biederman Pam. So he has he started doing like a sports talk, and now it's now it's on Com Comedy Central. You have um, even even if you stretch outside of web series in terms of a narrative platform. You have people like, um, you have, uh, what's, mm, I've forgotten his name, but he's, he, he, ah, he's got a, he's got an MTV web, um, reality show now that kind of saw of being Bonam. Yes. So La Cisre, La built his voice from the internet. It's, it's, it's a similar concept to web series. It's just web series is this specific type of voice. But if you look at that, he was doing that consistently. And now he has the shows. How you leverage it, how you leverage, and how you build a specific brand that people can buy into. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, I'd like to now bring it into the audience if there's any questions. But first and foremost, thank you guys for sharing your knowledge. Thank you so much for sharing your experience. Let's give them a round of applause, guys. Thank you.